This dude is working till 10 at night. That bad boy's hooked up. There's our spot right there where we pretty much got this thing dialed in. Aloha, my ohana. It is your boy, the Hawaiian fish keeper. Now, if you're new to the channel, let me be the first to give you a nice big warm aloha, and I'm gonna save you guys some time. Just hit pause right now, like this. Go subscribe to the channel. You guys are gonna love this. I promise you guys, because right behind me is my male Midas cichlid, and over here is Moana, my fader flower horn. And look it, they're getting a little frisky. Uh, there's a lot of sand being moved. Look at that. Ooh, something could happen in the next couple days or so. Subscribe. All right, my Ohana, so I am so sorry I had to hit you guys with a part two. Oh, I heard about it in the comments, don't worry. But I had to, there was just so much footage and I didn't want to leave anything out just in case you guys at home want to do a DIY above the ground predator pond, you guys can. Big shout out to my boy, Dennis. But before we get into this video, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen part one of this video, we're building an above ground predator pond. I'll leave a card up above. Click that card, go check out part one, come back here for part two, because it's final in this video. We add water and everything. So, enough yapping. Let's get back into the footage where we left off in part one. Ah. All right, so there's our spot right there where we're gonna drill a hole straight through that plywood, and that's where the bulkhead's gonna go, so you guys get a visual of what we're trying to do. So, uh, let's start drilling these holes. All right, so we're gonna take our hole saw, and we're going straight into this bad boy right here. Here we go. Don't do that. <laughs> this is the correct way of doing it. And that's how you break your wrist, too. <laughs> So now that we have that cut out, wow, look at that, huh? There's the sandwich that we're talking about. We were talking about that earlier. We need to cut this space out here for the insulation, so that way the bulkhead will fit back in the insulation. Okay. And then uh, after we cut that out, we'll, cut, uh, we'll drill a smaller diameter, just enough for the fitting to screw into the back of the bulkhead through the flat or through the uh, two by six on the back side. Mm, gotcha. Screw all this in together and sandwich everything together once we're once we get the bulkheads in. We already drilled through the plywood. This is gonna fit right through the plywood and we sandwich it on the back. So I need to make room for this ring. Now I need to make a bigger size for the insulation for the nut to fit into the insulation. So I just drilled out the same dimension as this hole. And I'm just gonna drill out the insulation now my nut will fit in this insulation. Once when I'm done, I'm gonna drill a hole right through the center of this with a small drill bit to pile it to spot it. And I'm gonna make a small hole just big enough for a fitting to screw in through so I don't take too much of this material out. Mm. And that's gonna go straight in. And then I'll come in through the back with a piece of PVC and screw it right into this and I'll be able to run my plumbing along the back. As you can tell, that's why Dennis is here. Like I said, he's the brains behind this operation. I'm merely someone who's just tagging along. Maybe his little sidekick. Mini me, are you hungry? Something to eat? Not even a hot pocket? You know, his Vanna White. And then the letter side. And then you side. have the letter, see? And then the green I'm handing him the tools and he's explaining to me what's going on. I have no clue how to do this kind of stuff. You know me, just keeping it real with you guys. That's why my boy Dennis is here because I have no idea. He told me the layout when he saw the above the ground pond. He said, let's do A, B, and C. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't have that vision. I don't have a mechanical mind. Some of you guys out there do. I am a very one dimensional, which is a non mechanical mind. All right, so Dennis is just screwing in the bulkhead here. It's a nice firm tight. And so I kept this little dimple uh -huh. facing up so I know where it is. So I'm not struggling when I put on the cover that dimple lines up your holes so when you put on the cover and you twist it it'll line up all these holes for you oh. and so sometimes when you use a thick liner like we're using you won't be able to feel that very well so i made sure i put them all upwards so even if i can't feel it i'll know where it is oh, okay put what size hole saw we need a couple of these and see which one's gonna fit in there i think that's probably good 
so. You're the expert, my man. I'm your Vanna White, dude. I'm turning I'm turning letters for you. Pat Sajak? Yeah. I'm just gonna spot it. Put a little mark on there for me. I'm not going all the way through so that way it doesn't splinter out of the backside. Uh -huh. so come back over here where that pilot hole is. Yeah. And then I'll drill from here. And Look now, at that. It didn't splinter across. Ah, it's so smart. You don't go all the way through so it doesn't splinter. I would have never done that. I would have splintered the hell out of this thing. There you go. Nice, clean work. It is done. We got the, uh, as you can see, wood, and then we have the insulation, and then the wood. We're rolling out the PVC membrane. We're just hoping that there's, that there's enough. enough. <laughs> we might have to go to Home Depot and get a pawn liner. Yeah, we're not getting a pawn liner. <laughs> Dennis is marking it off right now where we have to make the cut. This is going to be so interesting oh we got more than enough do we yeah i was a little worried there guys i was a little worried so it's going to overlap here and then the top is going to come on top of that and sandwich it right yes yeah. so we'll hide the liner that way so we'll cut the liner off we'll just take these little metal these nails i got and nail it into this and uh uh, put the top that sandwiches everything and hides everything. Okay. It's pretty crazy making a pawn out of PVC membrane fabric. I've never seen it done before. Um, I don't want to say it's a YouTube first, like a lot of people will say, uh, but it's definitely um, something out of the ordinary, that's for sure. Uh, the reason being, a lot of people don't use this PVC membrane, like I said earlier, because it's super expensive, and I'm just thankful and grateful to my boy Dennis that he's doing this for me with his, uh, you know, the extra that he has, but he has so many projects that he does that this is something he could definitely use for himself, but because he's a great guy and I love him, <laughs> he decided to um, help me out and create this for the above ground pond. So, like I said, man, I couldn't do it without my boy Dennis, there's no way. Um, I could have, it just would have been done Balling on a budget style, you know me, right? We would have went to Home Depot and got some kind of pond liner, but this way here, man, it's gonna be bananas. All right, so we just laid out the first piece of liner. Now you guys may be saying to yourself, oh, what about over there? How are you gonna get liner over there? So that's where that whole heat gun, we're gonna overlap it, seam. heat gun, seam it, and it's gonna make a watertight seal. This is crazy though, look at this. This is gonna come up, it's gonna overlap over the top there. Dennis is gonna tack it down with these nails here. That's gonna hold the liner in place. Gonna flatten it out, pull up all the slack. All right, as you can see, Dennis is tacking down the other side there. I'm actually probably uh, just as curious as you guys are when he seamed these liners together that's gonna make it a watertight seal. I'm curious, because I've never seen this, this done before. I've never even heard of PVC membrane liner. This is uh, something new to me. All right, so Dennis just powered on the heat gun, AKA the welder gun, AKA the Leister, Leister, have no idea how that's pronounced, but this thing is gonna get super hot and it's actually gonna melt. I guess you can say melt this plastic liner together. I'm sure you guys are probably wondering, is Dennis a carpenter? Is he a construction worker? He probably does all kind of... No, man, this guy is a do-it-yourself guy. His background is heat and air. He owns his own heat and air conditioning company. Uh, he does a great job, very successful at it. I'll leave a link. You have a website? I do not. You do not. He doesn't do anything on the internet. Look at that. That's like a, a unicorn, man. You're like a unicorn. Look at this guy. Everything's word of mouth, huh? That's when you know you got great service and everything's word of mouth and you don't have to use social media. I will leave the name 
of his heating and air conditioner based out of Vacaville, California. Definitely gonna do that. So don't hit up Dennis and say, hey, I need you to build me a pond because this isn't what he does. He just knows how to do things like this and he doesn't mind helping me out because I'm his best friend in the whole wide world. <laughs> All right, Dennis, here we go, man. He's got the... All right, if there is any roofers out there and I'm doing it wrong, don't tell me because I don't care. <laughs> There's nothing like the smell of some nice PVC membrane liner. <laughs> oh my gosh. Terrible. You would think watching Dennis's technique that he's done this thousands of times. Look at that. He's got that technique down. How long do you think it takes before it's cured? As long as it cools down, it's gonna cool down in a couple seconds. Wow, look at that. It's almost instant ready for water. All right now, Dennis is prepping. All right, now we're working the seal here. Man, this is wild. It's all in the technique, all in the technique. I'm actually shocked on how fast this PVC membrane seals with the heat gun. Look at that. We'll get a close-up on it. As he works the heat gun and the roller, instantly sealed. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you up close how this thing seals. Now, we're going to have the top panel cover this, so I just wanted to show you guys. But look at that. This is like, this is sealed water tight. All right, so now we got a non-reinforced PVC corner. Dennis is warming it up a little bit. Not sure if you guys heard exactly what Dennis said, but you're pretty much liquefying the two plastics. Melting them basically together. Look at that. And that's what it looks like when it's done. It's sealed the entire corner. Now we're going to do it to that corner over there. He's got it all lined up, ready to go. He's using the heat gun to heat up the PVC plastic. Heating the area in the corner where he's actually gonna push it against it. It's kind of an art form too, you know? You gotta know exactly when to pull away and when that plastic is hot enough without burning a hole straight through the, you know, the membrane, the PVC membrane. Oh, what do you think, guys? Look at that. I mean, it's pretty much done. Look at that. Bulkhead low, bulkhead high. You see that bulkhead way over there? The reason why it's high, that's going to be the return. And if I do a submersible pump, it's going right here in the corner. I'm not sure if I'm going to go submersible or external pump outside of the pond. Not sure. That's still up in the air. Uh, but what a great job he did. Look at the seams. Water tight. I can get some gravel. We can throw some pea gravel in here. Add some substrate. Leave it white. I don't know. Why don't you guys leave a comment down below? Tell me what you guys think. Should we leave this white? You guys got to factor in that algae is going to grow on this PVC liner. So it may turn a little green and whatnot. But I'm okay with this. I mean, you can't complain. Look at it. I love it. I love it. And not only that, though, because it is white, it'll actually show the fish, too. So we can get some good shots of the fish because it's a light color background. He did a great job. Look at this. And speak of the devil. Hey, there he is, man. Man, this looks so good, dude. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Now that Dennis is here, um, I thought we were going to call it quits. But you know what? He wants to get this plumbing done. So we're going to get some plumbing done. We're going to get this um, pump that I have. It's a submersible pump. We're going to get this submersible pump in this pond in this video. So he's actually uh, gluing the fittings right now. I'm gonna show you guys. We're reducing it down because I have an inch and a half in there. Oh, okay. And so we went from inch and a half to one inch. And then you already have some flexible ABS pipe. Okay. Stuff you already had. Yeah. And so this can glue directly into this pipe. So we're gonna cut it off and re-glue it into this pipe. And you wanna use a glue that's compatible with the ABS into PVC. We get that all-purpose okay all-purpose glue gotcha use some uh, joint compound to seal your joints don't 
tighten them too tight, PVC will crack. And uh, so hand, get another mess on your hand board. tight. Hand tight. So that's about as tight as I'll go. Gotcha. This stuff kind of lubricates the threads and allows you to screw it in tighter than than normal. Are threaded on the inside, so I can screw this in here. And if I need, once I screw on a pipe, I can glue it in, and I can put a couple turns on that if I need to. Oh, okay. And so now it's threaded on the inside of this bulkhead too, so we can put a fitting in here, direct the flow down, direct the flow up. Ah, um, gotcha. Elbow what, this, elbow that. Exactly. Or you can actually throw, uh, screw in a cap and drill a hole, and so you can drill in two holes, one on the bottom and one aiming upwards, so you get a little water agitation at the surface, mm. and then water that sprays down and kind of mixes the, yeah. the bottom layer of your pond. Oh, very cool. All right, my Ohana, so check it out. It's obviously, it's nighttime. Behind me is the pond. We finished it. I had no idea we were going to, um, I, th I thought we were going to stop working. I was like, okay, we're going to pack up things and, you know, maybe uh, schedule another day for Dennis to come back out. And um, this is just uh, probably a light work day for him. His his uh, average work time, which is like out of control, what is it like? Seven in the morning to 10 at night. That's a typical work schedule day for Dennis, which is crazy. I think the average American is like, eight to five, nine to five, you know, eight hours, an occasional, ooh, a big overtime shift for 10 hours. This dude is working till 10 at night. So this here is like, I don't know, late evening for him. We're gonna finish this. We're gonna get the plumbing hooked up. We're gonna get the filters. You can see right back there. We got the canister filter plugged in, going. I was like, okay, I'm not used to working this late. I already like clocked out already. So we pretty much got this thing dialed in. I'm gonna show you guys. All right, Ohana, so as you can see, we got the inflow is going, boom into the canister filter it'll filter there and there's the out going back inside the pond over down there so i was just talking to dennis and dennis said hey let's see if this bad boy holds water so we're gonna go ahead and uh fill this bad boy up we are adding water so this might take um three months to fill up so how about we hit you in the morning when this is nice and full, all right? We'll see you guys in the morning. Psh, boom, there it is, guys. It is full of water, just like that. It is the next day, and I actually picked the wrong day to see if it's leaking. Look at the ground. It's wet because it is raining. Yeah, crazy weather here in Sacramento. But the pond looks beautiful. Look at it. We're just gonna do a little walk around here. We got the pump working, or I should say the filter. That bad boy's hooked up. You can see the outflow too. I know it's not leaking. I know the ground is wet, but I know it's not leaking because as I filled this up last night, I kept checking on it, which is good news. Not only that though, when I filled it up, see how the water line is right at the halfway mark of the bulkhead and it hasn't moved. So I know it's not leaking. Um, you might be asking yourself, what is that cinder block doing? Cinder block there is just to keep that pump in place as it's shooting the water through the bulkhead. Uh, this is all temporary. This little, you know, pond filter, we're not gonna use this. It's just to get this thing up and going and we're not gonna have this set up. I'm gonna probably have an external pump and um, that way nothing will be in this above the ground pond except fish. That is the ultimate goal, but yeah, this is it guys. Let me just uh, take a step back so you guys can kinda take it all in. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think. So check out Ohana. I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a big like big shout out to my boy Dennis and I want to give another shout out to his boys Jerry and Noah one more punch out for the road I can't wait to do more content and videos on this above the ground pond stocking it heating it let's see if it holds the heat we'll see how good we can regulate the temperature because if I can't keep tropical fish in this above the ground pond hmm maybe we do some big mouth bass maybe we do some sunfish how about a sturgeon I know you guys in the comments have been saying, hey, get a sturgeon, get a sturgeon. I don't know, possibilities are endless. Maybe a couple high fin sharks in here too as well. Ooh, tell me what you guys think in the comments. If we do not do tropical fish, what type of uh, fish should we put in this pond? Hmm, this could be fun, guys. Other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks again to my boy, Dennis. I really appreciate all your help, man. Couldn't do it without you. And you guys will see a lot more of Dennis because He's the man or gentleman, I should say, that's going to help me with Tiki Falls 4.0. So just get used to seeing his face on my channel, all right? I will see you guys in the next video. Much love and aloha.